Hello SGD, Sacred Geometry Decoded. I'll, in the descri description box you'll find the playlist to this full series and this will be a continuation of it. And Now I'm going to look at a particular aspect and we'll be looking at metrology, geometry and how these systems link to astronomy, especially the allegedly modern English foot, the Egyptian royal cubit and the meter and through weights and measures how they'll come together. So here we see a double vesica Pisces. So we, you, know, you draw one circle, then the centre of the second circle is on the edge of the first, and then the centre of the third circle is on the edge of the second. And the compass would be set at 25 centimetres, one quarter of a metre. So we've now divided the metre into four units, but we'll get into that more. So the connections between the imperial English foot as it's called, which can be found in the Salamis stone at least 500 BC, uh, the Royal Egyptian cubit and the meter. This will be linking the pyramids of, of all of the pyramids of Egypt through measuring length, time and astronomy. Again, uh, in previous episodes went into depth in there, including important mathematical constants, not just some arbitrary system, but how the metrology, mathematical, geometric and ast astronomical constants all come together so measuring length but also we'll be measuring time and that's a common feature now um, I'm getting towards a pointy end of this series because also I'll be showing links to the Indus Valley civilization which I touched on and how uh, their weights and measures coincide beautifully in a very perfect system which measures what length it measures weight but more importantly it measures time and through this combination of these we can find Extraordinary links to the pyramids, especially in regards to geometry, as in geometry earth measure. And the, the unit used at Mohenjo-Daro perfectly describes the relationship of the Great Pyramid to the size of the earth, which is 1 in 86,400, as in 86,400 seconds per day. And a 1 metre pendulum, of course, describes a second, but okay. We're also looking at this... Um, Traditions have been passed on through time, for instance, in Rosicrucian uh, texts. But this will be the, the basis of this series, pretty much of the whole channel, is this concept of well, architecture, geometry, astronomy, and weights and measures. Foth being the god of weights and measures. He, her, his count, female counterpart, Sheset, being the god of goddess of scribes, accountants, geometry, surveying, astronomy, etc. And this would also coincide with Nuar and Fuzi in China. Uh, Ningashida in uh, uh, Sumer, or Hermes Tresmegistus, or Hermes as, or Mercury, as in the Greco-Roman traditions. So I mentioned this, so uh, the beginning of this series I was looking, focusing on Vitruvian Man by Leonardo da Vinci, which is based on Vitruvius's writings, the, the Roman architect, but also uh, as Alan Green points out, the connection between the meter, the foot, and the cubit, how these come together. So the idealized man, we could say, by the modern system of four cubits or six English feet. But uh, so a meter plus an Egyptian royal cubit plus a foot. So if you go into your, you know, any program or website, you add these together, it's going to be five point nine nine eight seven feet. That's one third of a millimetre, a little bit over one third of a millimetre difference. So essentially a human hair added to each of these would bring this to perfection. Now this is um, a, a, an issue of definition and an is, uh, issue of history of these units and, and how, they've, how we've come to the modern descriptions of them. But this margin of error in any other field would be considered uh, insignificant. I'll be linking Alan Green, because especially the CPAC trailer, the Alan CPAC, Alan Green trail, I'll be linking that again. Uh, like 15,000 views in his, on that channel has not even 800 subscribers. Uh, it's, it's um, yeah, so uh, it's a shame because uh, amazing work and yet it's uh, all but unknown. But so, for instance, now the six feet. So here we have some of the imperial definitions of six feet so six feet is four cubits because in the ink this is in the greco-roman fruit of the english system one and a half feet is a cubit so six feet is four cubits two yards one fathom 
but to also have these other definitions such as a span. Now a span, if you stretch your fingers out from the from the tip of your thumb to the tip of your pinky is a span, and that should be the same from the, your chin to the top of your head. Man is a measure of all things. And then we have hands, palm, inches or thumb, uncia, fingers or digits. And now each inch, uh, even going back to the, uh, mo the modern version, so Queen Elizabeth I, for instance, and the, um, her laws on weights and measures, but this actually goes back further than that, but that was written into law code, so Elizabeth I is a good point, but three barley corn equals one inch, so 72 times three is 216. Now each barley corn was then again subdivided into lot four lines or poppy seeds, so four poppy seeds equals one barley corn, three barley corn equals one inch, so all these units, man is a measure of all things, but just like with weight systems, so when you see the price of gold quoted on the news, they're talking about a troy ounce, which is slightly heavier than the normal ounce, but that's defined as 480 grain. Uh, about the only place that's common to hear grains as a weight, uh, as a system of weight, is still used in um, gunpowder, for instance. But uh, these go back quite some time. So most people yards, feet, inches, common, but it's, it's poppy seeds, barley corn, digits or fingers, palm and hand. Now they all coincide. So imperial units this will come back so the meter the great pyramid actually the other pyramids as well but how the imperial foot the royal cubit and the meter connect together now if i was to draw a circle one meter in diameter which we have this the seed of life pattern or the hexagon as in you could a star of david you can see it's just a star of david that's been tilted to the side this geometry perfectly divides a circle up into six and that one-sixth of that unit just happens to be one Egyptian royal cubit. And there we see the seed of life, as it's called. And it's one of the beauties of geometry that it, uh, it divides the circle perfectly into six units or six equilateral triangles. So there to there to there and back again would create an equilateral triangle as well. There we see an example of, so I'll just cut out that middle section and this would divide the circle into six if it was one metre diameter. Therefore, pi meters, the circumference of that circle, is equal to pi over 6 meters, or 1 Egyptian royal cubit. Now, for instance, this geometry of a double vesica is the same. So, all it is is an extension of this geometry. Now, it's important to think that the seed of life, that divides it up into 6, but we also see intersections here. So, what we, we really do is we're dividing the circle into 12 units. So just like the 12 signs of a zodiac or the 12 ages of the great year, this division of 12 is very important one. So 12 months of a year, that would be a circular calendar. That's a, a, a solar year, but we'll be looking at lunar years as well. All the 12 hours of the clock face. This is again de de described by this geometry. Now back to ancient Egypt. Uh, they were using base 10 to divide their units for instance you'll find in this in the lesser known smaller pyramids they pretty much have a standard base length of 100 egyptian royal cubits but the oldest surviving egyptian sundials divided the hour divided the day the daylight period into 12 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 therefore night was divided into 12 units also but this 12 hour day just like our clock face 12 it's not we don't use 24 we use 12. We measure 12 hours for the day and then 12 hours for the night. So to the Osiron, this famous temple, and there on these um, columns there, you find there are several of these uh, geometric patterns uh, engraved in there, and you'll see that there they match this same geometry. Uh, there's also uh, uh, references to Seti the First in there. So just off to the side, the um, op the Isida project. I put that uh, in there. Because again, um, it's yeah, uh, the age of Yasiron, some would push it. Okay, I won't go into ages, but what we have is there is a, a, um, a tomb attached to this or tomb esque structure, but it has all the all the fun, all the, where there are other known tombs, you see these same features. It has a calendar, um, and also instructions for a sundial and measuring time. Now, measuring length and weight 
I could just grab a rock and say, okay, this is our standard weight. I could just cut a stick and say, this is our standard unit. However, measuring time, especially, is, is a much more complicated, much more esoteric process. You're trying to capture something that you can't see, you can't touch it. Time is a, a, a ephemeral, and, and that's why uh, the measurement of time is very, very important. So the, uh, the Mayans had a, a 12, 12 days of 30 month plus a 5 day period. The Romans had 12 days of 30 month, months plus a 13th month of 5 days. The Egyptians had a uh, 360 day, 12 times 30, plus a 5 day inter interclinary period. Which is nicely be uh, because of the length of the um, solstices and the, the, the sun apparently sort of sets in the... Well, okay... There's some really cool stuff in regards to that. Um, now, here's a Roman market calendar. You see, it's got exactly the same geometry that we have here. This is You'll find it in um, Hindu and Sikh temples and all across the world, really. This And this geometry is essential. Um, and it's natural, because if I draw a circle with a compass, where am I going to put the second circle? Well, because of symmetry, you put it on the edge of the first. And if you just follow this pattern, this is what you'll get. It's white, so it's uh, nature insists on it in this sense. But this Roman market calendar, okay, here we have a Roman sundial. One example, there are many of them, but again, they're dividing their days into 12. The Greco Romans were not shy at all about saying that they learnt their geometry and timekeeping from Heliopolis and from the ba uh, Babylonians, Chaldeans, and Sumerian traditions. So, base 60, 60 seconds per um, minute, 60 minutes per hour. The Sumerian base 60 system, which can't, so 5 times 12 would be 60. And this is, and I can divide, I can't divide, so 10 divided by 3 is 3.3333. I can divide 10 into quarters, uh, for instance, uh, okay, 100 divided by 4 is 25. It divides n neatly. You can't divide 10 into thirds very efficiently. The base 12 system I can, because 12 divided by 2 is 6, 12 divided by 4 is 3, so I can divide it into halves and quarters, but if I divide 12 by 3, I get 4. So that's one of the benefits of this base 12 system, 12 inches per foot, or the 12 hours of the day. It allows you to make more efficient divisions, especially if you're working in a market, like I only want one third of a yard of cloth, or I only want one third of an ounce. It's more, in that sense, it's a more efficient system. I'm all, I love base 10, but there are a lot to be said about base 12, as in 12 hours per day, the Egyptians and the Romans now, and which links to months, but also you'll notice that, again, this pattern just leads you to a division of 12. So it begins with three, the equilateral triangle, then the Star of David, as it's called, the hexagram, six, and then 12, and then 24, 48, 96, uh, which connects lovely to Bode's Law. But time geometry and measure systems so the clock face holds knowledge now a lunar year is 12 full moons now the solar year is 12.369 full moons that's square root of 153 but we also look at the 12 inches per foot but also as i mentioned earlier the feet and inches are then subdivided again by barley corn or by poppy seed so 12 inches per foot or 12 lines or poppy seeds per inch. So these are, uh, now we're looking at natural time and how these coincide. So whether it's the sun or the moon, sun, earth, moon and stars, these are examples of natural time. It, uh, it could be argued that the you know, 12, 24 hour day, 60 minutes per hour, 60 seconds per minute is an arbitrary system. Well, we'll look into that a little bit more, but there is certainly, whether it's the synodic, the sidereal month, the lunar year or the solar year, these are divisions of natural time, and this is where the deeper connections will come through. And I'll reach it, okay, nearly at 15 minutes. I'll put that, again, we'll be looking at this in the next part. So this was just an intro, the, uh, the esoterics of measuring time comes together to measuring length. And this is in some uh, universal laws of physics as well, and how they coincide to other geometric, mathematical, even chemical constants that define not just our Earth, or our solar system, but the entire cosmos. And these particular systems blend so wonderfully to these ancient measure systems and ancient architecture, with the Great Pyramid being just one example.
Okay, cheers, have a good one. Next part will be up soon.